What if the ground beneath your feet is whispering secrets in the form of white, twisting veins running through solid stone? Most people walk past quartz veins without a second glance. But in the world of geology, prospecting, and even treasure hunting, these veins are loud signals, screaming of movement, pressure, and possibly wealth. Let's crack open the wild truth of quartz veins. Their presence is not just a coincidence. Quartz doesn't just appear. It fills cracks and fractures that have been forced open by the immense pressures of the earth. These are nature's scars, and in many cases, they heal with something extraordinary. Quartz veins are often associated with hydrothermal activity. Imagine boiling water deep within the earth's crust, rich in dissolved minerals. As it shoots upward through fractures and fissures, it cools, and the minerals within it begin to crystallize. First to form, quartz and what might follow it can be even more valuable. In mining regions across the world, from the Sierra Nevada to the Andes, and all across East Africa, quartz veins are among the first signs prospectors look for. That's because these veins can lead directly to the source of precious minerals like gold, silver, and copper. But the story doesn't end there. Quartz veins don't always form in neat, straight lines. Some twist and spiral, following complex geological weaknesses. Others appear shattered, broken apart by newer movements and tectonic stress. Every fracture tells a story, and where quartz is involved, those stories often come with glittering punctuation marks. Gold, in particular, has an affinity for quartz. In fact, most of the world's richest hard rock gold deposits are embedded in quartz. Sometimes gold forms along the walls of the vein. Other times, microscopic particles are locked inside the quartz itself. When you see quartz veins cutting through dark host rocks like basalt or schist, pay attention. That stark contrast isn't just beautiful. It's a geological signpost, especially when iron staining, rusty streaks, or pyrite crystals start to show up nearby. These clues are the fingerprints of a mineral-rich system. But even when the gold isn't visible to the naked eye, the presence of quartz alone can indicate that a hydrothermal system once pulsed through the area. And that means other minerals might still be hiding nearby. Here's where it gets fascinating. In regions where ancient volcanoes once stood, quartz veins often appear like webs stretching across miles of terrain. Geologists map these veins meticulously, using them to trace the source of mineralization. If you're in the wild and spot a quartz vein that runs for more than a few meters and seems to have a consistent thickness, that's something worth investigating especially if the vein shows signs of multiple generations, where newer quartz has overprinted older layers. This could mean a long-lasting hydrothermal system and multiple opportunities for mineral enrichment. Some veins are just a few centimeters wide. Others balloon out into meter-wide beacons of mineral activity. But size isn't everything. Sometimes the narrowest vein can contain the richest deposit. Old-timers in the Gold Rush era followed quartz veins religiously. They didn't need GPS or digital maps, just a good eye for rock and an understanding of what the Earth was trying to say. In modern times, even with all the tech we have, quartz veins are still one of the first things geologists target when exploring new terrains. They're like arrows pointing to what's buried deep below. And remember, quartz is incredibly resistant to weathering. So even after millions of years, these veins still cut through landscapes like geological lightning bolts. Sometimes quartz veins act like dams, trapping minerals as fluids try to move past. Other times, they're simply pathways, evidence of what once was. But either way, they're never just decoration. In the wild, quartz veins could be beneath your boots right now, unseen but powerful. You just need to know what they're telling you, because they're not just rock. They're relics of Earth's inner fury, and sometimes of its hidden treasure. Quartz veins are rarely alone. In fact, they often act like the roots of a much larger system. Think of them as threads in a tapestry, and when you start pulling one, you may unravel an entire story beneath your feet. One of the most compelling clues to look for near quartz veins is sulfide mineralization. Sulfides, such as pyrite, calcopyrite, or galena, often coexist with quartz in hydrothermal environments. When the fluids that deposit quartz also contain sulfur and metals, these minerals crystallize out as the water cools and pressure drops. 
Pyrite, often called fool's gold, can be an especially important indicator. Not because it has much value on its own, but because it often forms alongside real gold. If you spot small brassy cubes of pyrite embedded in quartz veins, it may mean you're standing on a system that once carried significant gold content. But even more fascinating are the color variations in quartz. Milky white quartz is the most common, but when it appears smoky, stained yellow, reddish, or even purple, it may signal the presence of trace elements or secondary mineralization. For instance, iron staining on quartz can indicate oxidation of sulfide minerals, a good sign that there was once rich fluid activity. In the desert regions, these iron-stained quartz veins are often the only signs left above ground that a treasure once passed through. Let's go deeper into the textures. Massive quartz forms as solid, milky white, or glassy veins. But sometimes quartz grows in a druzy or vuggy pattern, lined with crystal points facing inward toward open cavities. These openings, or vugs, are especially prized because they indicate slow crystallization and possible enrichment zones. Inside these vugs, geologists and collectors have found crystals of tourmaline, topaz, beryl, and even gold flakes clinging to the quartz faces. In some places, quartz veins contain pockets of rare pegmatites, ultra-coarse rocks that form during the final stages of magma crystallization. Pegmatites can host large, high-quality crystals of gemstones like aquamarine, garnet, and spodumin. That's right, quartz veins can lead not only to metals, but to gemstones. When you examine a quartz vein closely, always look for zoning, alternating layers of clear and milky quartz, or shifts in grain size. These indicate pulses of fluid movement over time. Each pulse might have brought a different set of minerals to the surface. In regions with tectonic uplift, erosion may have stripped away the host rock, leaving quartz veins exposed like ribbons across the land. These veins are easier to spot in sunlight due to their reflective surfaces. They stand out against darker soil and bedrock, creating a natural roadmap. And let's talk structure. Not all veins run vertically. Some are horizontal, called sills, others diagonal or branching. Stockworks, a network of intersecting quartz veins, are particularly important in mining as they suggest a widespread mineralizing event. Think of a stockwork as a web of potential with every intersection a possible treasure chest. But remember, not all quartz veins are created equal. Some are barren, ghostly remnants of fluid movement with no mineral wealth at all. The key is to read the signs around them. Are there sulfides, iron staining, host rocks with alteration patterns, like bleaching or clay zones? These features can indicate whether the fluid system was rich in metals or just passing through. Geologists also study the orientation of veins. Their direction and angle can hint at the stress fields and fault zones of ancient geological events. That context helps predict where to dig next. In places like Alaska, California, Ghana, and Australia, entire gold rushes were triggered by quartz veins. Some barely thicker than a pencil contained ounces of gold per ton of rock. Others opened into massive chambers of mineralized ore. Today, hobbyist prospectors still follow these signs. With a rock hammer and a hand lens, they read the wilderness like a book, a book where quartz is the ink. And here's the secret most people miss. You don't need to find gold to strike knowledge. By learning what quartz veins actually mean, you learn to see the earth differently. You begin to understand that every crack in a stone is a memory, every sparkle a message. Even when the riches are long gone, the story remains. And for many, that story is its own reward. So next time you spot a white vein slicing through dark rock on a hillside or riverbed, stop, look closer, feel the texture, examine what's around it. Because that vein might be the last visible trace of an ancient hydrothermal pulse or the first step on your own treasure trail. Don't ignore what lies beneath. Because quartz veins don't just decorate the earth, they reveal it. This is EGS Pro. Stay curious, stay sharp, and keep listening to the stories the earth is dying to tell.